Hello, everybody. Welcome back to good old Larry's Anything Goes. Yes, I have a little bit of a goofy side, but hey, you got to laugh sometime in this life, right? Because <laughs> life is a little too short. Anyways, we're going to talk about my favorite subject matter, money, 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 money. But we're not going to talk about it in the form of most people talk about it in buying nonsense. It doesn't mean anything after you buy it, especially given the fact that Black Friday just passed and Cyber Monday is coming tomorrow. And I'm sure everybody, if they have not spent their money, they will be spending it tomorrow, giving their money to a, a corporation that's not going to give it back to them on any level. But hey, it's always nice to have good things that don't mean anything, right? Anyways, we're going to get into the topic really of not just money as a whole, but we're going to get into the topic of money as in gold and silver. Because I think when people mostly think of money, they think of two aspects of it, cash money and credit cards or debit cards, but they don't think of any other aspect of uh, money and especially in the original form of what money was before even paper money and credit cards and debit cards really even came into existence, you know. Um, and the funny thing is just from listening to various different podcasts and doing my own research, it amazes me how most people don't even realize, especially our generation, the millennial generation, does not realize the fact that gold and silver actually um, the value of gold and silver is actually more than actual cash money in itself. You know, it's a, it's a crazy thing because most people utilize nowadays debit cards and credit cards. It's a rarity if ever anybody even uses cash money anymore. I mean, I was at a grocery store today and this gentleman was paying with cash money and exact change. And the thing is, it took a lot longer for him to pay for his food. But the value that he was paying, utilizing to pay for his food probably way worth more than what I use as far as using, utilizing my debit card. Um, a great example. You have a $20 bill here. Okay. But if you had $20 in actual quarters or in actual gold, the value of this is more than the $20 bill. Now, most people probably be like, no, that's crazy. I just don't see that happening, you know. How, how the heck is gold and silver, the value of that, actually worth more than cash money? If you look at the history of money as a whole, um, you know, especially during the beginning of the existence and the, the, the birth of this country, you know, what was utilized as currency was gold and silver. A lot of the reasons why even people came to the Americas was for the gold, for the silver, and obviously for the cotton and the tobacco and all that good stuff when it came to capitalism but usually the sort of trade that, that that took place during that time period and for a long time throughout america's history and the world's history really when you look at it when it came to currency they utilized gold and silver you know and people didn't come up with their own currency dollar bills for decades for centuries you know for a long time because during that time period that th those actual paper dollars did not have any value but the gold and silver had way more value was much more valuable and people really don't look at it like that and in the and the craziest thing is by purchasing gold and silver nowadays you know you actually it's actually worth way more than you having cash money so the funny thing is when you really look into and I'm you know apologize but I'm looking into my notes um, when it comes to the cost of gold it's actually Two, it's it's um so an ounce of gold in in the sense is worth thirteen hundred dollars, and um if you and the thing is back during the day you know the Federal Reserve the, the beautiful bank that it is, um purchased um gold at a cost of two and a half cents per dollar bill. And the only time that people could actually um I mean the only time that the Federal Reserve could actually um create money is they had to have gold or silver to back that up. You know, nowadays they just create money out of thin air. It's like, poof, it appears. They just put the ink to paper and the money magically appears. And the craziest thing is in doing my research, I wouldn't, the United States would not be able to, to create as much money as it does today if it still had that old standard of actually having the gold and the silver to back it up. You know, it's and in a sense, if you look at it, it's like if you use, utilize a credit card, but you already have the money, it's, you know, so you're utilizing the credit card. So, of course, the credit card company is still going to charge you interest. But it just depends on, like, say, if you spend $10 on that credit card, they charge you interest, 
uh, might be three to five dollars. You know, you're paying extra. But if you already have that money anyways, you're not, you're not really losing out. You know, the credit card company is making money, but they're not making as much money as for a person that has zero dollars and they spend two hundred dollars. And so the person has to make the bare minimum payment every time they get paid. So therefore, they continuously tackle on the interest until you pay the bill off. And that's how the credit card companies and the banks make their money when it comes to that. And it's the same. And in a sense, you look at it like, why are you talking about um, credit cards when we're really this whole thing is about gold and silver? Well, it's the same thing. The U.S. General, uh, creates a certain amount of paper dollars, but then they don't have the gold and the silver to back it up. You know, so the interest on that money that they're creating is way higher because they don't have the gold and silver to back it up, to back that money up. And in a sense, it's creating a loan, you know, and that's and that's why the p people who have gold and who have silver, especially if they have a stockpile of it in the safety deposit box or just in the, probably in the better places in the safety of their own home, um, that value is going to be is is and will be way more worth than any you having thousands of dollars in your bank account. Give especially given the fact that everybody knows that when you just let money sit in your bank account, you're losing money. Because the um, the interest that you get from back from the bank or credit union, whomever you you're utilizing your your money with, um, it's not really worth anything. Like say if you have five dollars, a couple of weeks go by, you might have two two or three dollars at most. And what is a bank, especially a bank? What do they do with your money when it's sitting in the bank? They're, they're doing what you're supposed to be doing with your money. They're making it circulate and percolate. Because, you know, that's why they call it currency. Currency is supposed to move. It's not supposed to sit in one place. You know, just like when you spend money at a store, you spend it online, purchasing specific items, you're making that money move. Now, is it moving for you in a good way? Depends on how you look at it. But really, it's not really looking at moving for you in a good way because it's not growing. It's supposed to be, you know, you look at money like a seed. You know, you plant the seed so it can grow. Then you can harvest and then you, you continuously grow your harvest in abundance. So therefore, you're plentiful in the amount of money that you have. That's, that's you know, buying the regular nonsense like food, clothing, you know, paying your bills. That You have to do what you have to do. That's just what it is. You got to survive. But I'm talking about after that. You know, what are you doing with your money? It's, it's called currency for a reason. It's supposed to move around continuously in a circle, you know. And that's the whole thing at the end of the day. You let your money sit in a bank account it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to, it's a relationship that you're supposed to have and it's like creating a family, you know, all right, you get married, you have a kid, now I have three more kids. <laughs> that's the best way for me to des describe it in a sense. I'm not telling you I have a bunch of kids that's on you, it's your life. But what I'm saying is continuously make sure you're growing your garden of money and not growing the garden of money in the things that don't mean anything. Like, if you're buying real estate, that means something. You're buying cars, unless you're in the car business of selling cars or fixing cars, if you're just buying cars that look good, then you're not making your money circulate and percolate. You're making it circulate and percolate for the person who sold you the car. <laughs> so think about it in that instance. You know, if you're buying even diamonds. Now, diamonds, you know, jewelry, things of that nature, it's worth something. But here's the crazy thing. Diamonds are not currency. <laughs> the only thing that is currency is is paper money, gold and silver, those three things, and then, you know, stocks and bonds, those other five things, because those are things that grow. But out of all those things I just mentioned, the only thing that doesn't really grow and add value at the same time is the paper dollar. The only time it does grow is when you put it in something like a stock, like a bond, like an IRA, or like a business, because then you're making it generate more income. Now, if it's gonna generate 500 today, 100 tomorrow, 5,000 the next day, it doesn't matter. It's still growing. <laughs> That's the whole purpose. Like you, you, plant, you plant fruits, you plant vegetables, you plant any sort of plant in a specific garden or field or whatnot, it might grow a little today, it might die a little tomorrow, but it's 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 going to fluctuate, go up and down, up and down, up and down. So money and plants have one thing in common. They're circulating and they're percolating. That's the thing at the end of the day. And um, I don't know about you, but it's in your best interest to not only invest your money into those things that I mentioned earlier, but you need to ensure that you're at least, if not at least once a year, purchasing some gold and purchasing some silver. 
because when the next economic collapse comes, and it will come no matter who the president is, so let's not go there, you need to be financially prepared, you know, because that's the thing that the media doesn't talk about enough. Are you financially prepared for what's to come? Get all the nonsense going on with stars and rappers and singers. I don't care about them because they're making money work for them, you know. And I'm not a Kardashian fan, but guess what? The Kardashians know how to make money. And they know how to make money grow, circulate, and percolate. Now, am I a fan of theirs? Absolutely not. But I'm a fan of anybody who knows how to make money grow. And they know how to make money grow. And what, no matter how crazy they are or sane they are, they know how to make money grow. And the Kardashians of the world know how to make money grow. And that's the thing you got to ask yourself the question. Are you just a consumer? Or are you consuming and investing at the same time? You're going to consume no matter what. Even the Kardashians and the Bill Gates and the Mark Zuckerbergers can consume things. But I believe that they invest more and grow more than they actually consume. The majority of the time you see a person like Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Cuban, Bill Gates, they're actually wearing just regular plain clothes like I'm wearing right now. They're comfortable. They're not wearing anything fancy because all their fancy stuff is tied into things that's actually growing. <laughs> so that's the things you really got to just, you know, put in perspective. Um, and, hey, if you can't afford to do that, I understand it. But you can afford at least to buy $10 worth of stocks once a month. And if you can't do that, then you got to really look at what you're doing with your life financially. That's all I can say. Um, finances to me is not about looking good and impressing people. Finances to me is about having some financial security. That's why it's something I continuously think about on a day-to-day -day basis, to have some security. Not to outshine anybody or not outdo anybody because I'm not in high school anymore and I didn't care about that nonsense then. As a grown man, I really don't care about that nonsense. So it's all about what I think about me, my life, my future, et cetera, and so forth. So... Those are things to look into, you know, especially, you know, because the greatest thing, the great thing to really take into consideration is one thing. If there is a, is a, a collapse of the economic system, you want to be able to make sure that you have gold and silver, because if there is a collapse of any economic system, no matter what country you live in, and your, your dollar of your country means nothing anymore because all the banks have shut down, et cetera, and so forth, if you got this... The value of it is way more, and people will be willing to trade with you before they want to accept the value of a dollar. You know, it's just something to take into consideration. I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-anything. I'm just saying, have your money, have your gold, have your silver. Have it all. <laughs> Save it all. Because if you're saving it all, then you're, you're putting yourself in a better position to not, not only not be broke, but in case there's an economic collapse, to be ready and adjust accordingly because that's what life is all about being ready to adjust accordingly no matter what happens because things are subject to change no matter who you are no matter where you are in life etc and so forth because i know millionaires have to deal with changes and adjust accordingly when the markets fluctuate when the markets go down when the markets go up and the demand is so crazy that they got to continue to buy and sell buy and sell grow get employees get partnerships etc and so forth that's how you got to look at life things are subject to change because if things aren't changing in your life, then that's another thing you need to take into consideration. Are you prepared? Are you ready? And last but not least, let's get into the conversation that most people are um, talking about nowadays. It's cryptocurrency. So most people want to know, I'm just going to read what the definition is so I make sure I don't mess it up. Cryptocurrency is a digital virtual currency that uses cryptography for security. Um, it's difficult to counterfeit because of this security feature because it's actually digital digitized money. Um, and the thing is about the digitized money, it's not recognized by any government. And I would understand that because, you know, if, if what it, and, the, and the crazy thing is about cryptocurrency, it, the, the value of it's going up and up and up. The price of it is going up and up and up. But the thing is, it can't really be utilized. But people are buying it all over the world. But it can't be utilized for the simple fact that no government recognizes it. But that's the, I, I know essentially at the end of the day, that's the whole purpose of it is for somebody, they have a thousand dollars and they can go to any country and utilize that without having to go to the, the, the local bank and exchange the value of the dollar. It, Cause it's, it kind of just takes the value away from the dollar. It's like you go to a third world country, the U S dollar might take a lot farther than if you go to a European country or Canada where the dollar, the value of a dollar is nothing compared to their currency. So 
that's that whole debacle. But I think it's, should you buy a lot of cryptocurrency? No. But I think it's in one's interest to investigate and see if buying some cryptocurrency is in your best interest. Because if you, if it is, you never know. Once again, it's looking at it as, again, as another black backup plan. You know, you, you got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, et cetera, and so forth. There's nothing wrong with having backup plans in this life. At least that's my that's my um, perspective when it comes to cryptocurrency. Is it a good thing to um, to buy into? I've done it. I bought one here and there. I don't see anything wrong with it. But what's the future of it? It's unpredictable. But right now, I think it's actually pretty interesting when you really um, put it in perspective. And um, you know, the thing is, and if and if anybody's interested, um, go to Bitcoin, download the app. I got it on my phone. You can purchase it. They have other aspects of it on there and it's because it's the it's the biggest thing going on right now and if you want to do more research into it i think it's a good idea but don't take my word for it because my thing is just to put the information out there and have you do your own research because you know that's what i've done and that's what i would expect anybody else to do when it comes to making any sort of investments in this life so that's about the size of it um if you like the video uh please give it a thumbs up um when it comes to down to it you know, you work for money, and then you make money work for you. If you're, all you're doing in your life is working for money, then there's a problem, because you got it's the, it's it's a, it's a relationship. You work for it, you make it work for you. Period. If money's not working for you every day, if you're not looking into an app and looking at the value of uh, your specific um, investment, then there's a problem. If you can't do it financially, then maybe get another job. Or get a second job. Because if you're not doing that, then when you get into your 50s and 60s, you will sincerely regret it. Unless you're a person that's rich, then you're not even a part of this conversation. But if you're your average, regular working person like myself and most of the people that I know, it's in your best interest to work for the money and make it work for you. All right? Um, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. And remember... Um, anytime you utilize Cyber Monday and Black Friday, you're just making somebody else rich. But you have an option to buy stocks and bonds or put money into your IRA account or whatever sort of investments. Or if you have a business, put more money into your business. So therefore, if you're taking, good, taking advantage of good deals during those two days, but you're still making investments at the same time, then I look at it as a win-win situation. You, you save some money and you made some money at the same time. Anyways, take it easy. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, have a good one.